What's up, family? So, Jermaine Dupri, I saw the video going around of him speaking on the lack of youth in church is affecting the quality of R&B. And yes, I do agree to a certain extent. We need to kind of break that down a little further. Now, number one, we need more young people to go to church for simply the relationship with God. That's like the foundation, mental health, spiritual, uh, financial, just to help you become a better person. I think young people should go to church for that. But also noting that what he's talking about is more of a time period of church because church today is not as influential to the music as it was the 80s, 70s, late 70s, 80s, 90s church music, choir music. You got to know exactly who influenced who to understand this conversation. So with the Anthony Hamilton and the Jodeci reference, Jodeci's influence was commission. Now, Anthony, on the other hand, is has a unique tone of a vocal tone that just really stands out that you can't duplicate. And so if you are one of those young people that saw that video and you want to go to church to check, you, you got to make sure you go to a church that is singing more gospel music versus contemporary CCM right now. A lot of churches, most people, worship departments are doing CCM. But um, there are some churches who are diving into the music in a certain kind of way. And I would encourage you to study artists like Commission, uh, the Hawkins family, study uh, Kim Burrell, early Kirk Franklin, Clark Sisters, uh, Jay Moss, <laughs> who was a part of their family, right? Um, Fred Hammond, of course, John P. Key, who was a hu huge influence on me, Hezekiah Walker, um, all of those choir songs will kind of teach harmony, right? Teach the vibe of what that was, the church music, and also just understanding the complexity of chord structure, because when we were coming up at church, we had to learn a far more complex chord structure on songs that are not as challenging today, um, and which that built your skill set, but also opened you to a wide range of chords that you could play in the an R&B. So say, for example, right now, we just got the, the basic... Basic chords which work in certain genres, you know, singer, songwriter, pop, Christian music now. Um, but if you want to stretch, like what we had to play was songs that had progression that... Like all that stuff like that was from playing a bunch of different church songs that had a variety of chord structure. So it did help. So in the early production, a lot of folks may not use as many chords nowadays, but I think the idea is to catch influence, right? So the first thing I would say is to not only study all the great gospel music that's out there, the voices that's out there, Learn how to play instrument, number one. Um, even if you're a rapper, I feel like it will make your music more interesting and then your approach way more theoretical, but also you can be spontaneous, but it's just good to know an instrument. I think you'll have way more longevity in your career if you do it that way. 
Um, because here's the thing. When I was in school getting my bachelor's degree, I did a paper on the devaluation of creators. And I think I was going from the perspective of being somebody who knew how to play, who practiced, who had to play as a job. And I felt that I was being devalued, but it wasn't just me. I had friends and stuff like that who were producers, songwriters, who were great musicians as well. And so what I noticed the trend was is that the labels wanted to start paying less for your creative work. And so by the end of that program, I understood why that is, because music is a commodity and they want that commodity uh, at a low price. And now we've come to the point in the industry where really that's what they're getting. Um, I don't know if people understand what's happening right now with the major labels and things that are shifting even further into a non-signing artist thing. And a lot of them are moving to distribution models, meaning that they're going to be like the TuneCore CD Baby and just basically allow artists to go through their systems, meaning that they don't have to sign you to get your music anymore. But anyway, that's a whole nother subject we'll talk about in another video. This is more about the influence of church on R&B, and I totally get it. There's There's a lot of artists who have been speaking out about this, about the boring vibe R&B and all that stuff about R&B needing uh, a resurgence. And yes, I agree. Um, because you can't take those sound bites that you hear from everybody and not create a solution for that. And so with my company, we'll be definitely hosting retreats. Uh, indefinitely, more than likely starting in 2025, where we go on location. I like to work in Malibu. And so that would be one of the locations, Joshua Tree. And these are going to be wellness retreats where it's going to be a sober environment. We focus on exercise. We focus on conversation, mental health, and creating some of the best music that we can. But the goal would have mentors there that work in the business to help shape the songs of the next generation. And the thing is, Artist development from a label perspective has been gone. And so I would encourage most up and coming creators to focus their finances on developing themselves first, uh, participating in retreats, uh, going to take classes, vocal lessons, piano lessons, whatever you got to do. The more refined you are as an artist the more studied i would dare to say that you'll last longer than the next person that just uploaded their songs to spotify and mind you that's a hundred thousand people per day so my thing is for you to break through to stand out to last for longevity, you have to be really good at it. So you need to study everything you can. Gospel music for sure. Because it's important. Every every genre has their standout stars. Their, their incredible songwriters. Study incredible songs. Look at the history of the top 10 charts. And start to analyze, well, why did that work? And look at your songs. Make sure that your songs aren't just a repetitive vibe of somebody else's song with the same lyrics. I mean, nowadays we got ChatGPT, and you can actually look up what's the most repeated lyrics in songs and make sure you stay away from it. <laughs> just type it in and tell me what comes up in the comments. You can drop it down there. Um, so anyway, I, I'm here to encourage, I'm not here to spectate. I'm not here to put 
anyone down, but we want to create solutions. So the first solutions will be the creative retreats, the wellness retreats. And you can sign up to my newsletter if you want to be a part of something like that. And then furthermore, we'll be doing our consultations for the music disruption tool. That's what I want to call it right now. I can't say much, but um, we do have a music disruption company that we'll be launching soon. So we'll let you know about that in the newsletter as well. So anyway, again, if you guys want to go to church to get the influence, I encourage it um, because while you're there listening to music, you'll find God. That's the biggest blessing that we can ever find in this world because truthfully, and I may have to expound on this in another video, making music may not be your purpose. Somebody hears that and they're like, it is my purpose. No, that's what I thought. Um, making music is a gift that you give to the world. But you'll find purpose. I guarantee you'll find purpose through through your gift. So, but we'll talk about that later. Again, thanks for stopping by on the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe or share this video with somebody else if it helped you out. All right. Hit the like button and I'll see you guys on the next video.